I can't understand the behavior of the guy I love, but apparently I'm losing him forever. It so happened that for several years we worked together. We had a semi-friendship, semi-flirtation. At the same time, he was on friendly terms with a lot of girls, but he singled me out. Then he quit his job, but continued to call me often and visit us at work once a month. None of the other buddies would visit, he would come to me. Since he never made it clear that he liked me, never asked me out on a date, I could only guess that he probably liked me. But there were doubts. Although why he would go to his old job and call me if there was no interest, it's hard to say. One day, he and I had what you might call a fight. He went on vacation before that he called me to say goodbye. I said that I would wait for his arrival, that I would be bored without him. He flew from these words of mine, answered that he too will be very much waiting for a meeting. Then I accidentally found out that he went on vacation with a girl. This hurt me, made me jealous and angry. When he came back and came over to show us the pictures from the vacation, where by the way, there was a girl, he went with his parents, their friends, a large company. There were many girls, one of them was her, although I did not know, of course, who it was. I was so mad at him that I talked to him very disrespectfully. I didn't want to look at the pictures as if I had done him a favor. He didn't understand what had happened, was unpleasantly taken aback by my rudeness. But I couldn't tell him that I was jealous and that I was angry, that he had, in fact, deceived me. He gave me hope and seemed to be interested in me while he was resting with someone else. We parted ways after that meeting, very unhappy with each other and then he disappeared for two months. I knew from my friends that during that time he had already had one night stands with a few girls. This, of course, was not happy and I would have been happy to forget about him. But it was at that moment that I realized how much I really cared about him. I struggled with myself for those two months and then I texted him that I missed him. He replied that those words would warm his soul a light flirtation and correspondence in silence. After a while, I wrote again and asked him why he no longer came to see us. He crumpled and crumpled and promised to come back one day. He kept his word. He came and said he was getting married soon. I had the feeling he stabbed me in the back. The conversation was very strange. We were not alone, as always during his visit. My roommate was present. My roommate and I started asking him about his bride-to-be. He dreamily shared what a good hostess she was, how delicious her borscht was in the multi-cooker. I was shaking with jealousy and pain. I told him some nonsense about the bride, cruelly joked about his intention to marry. He got angry. When I said I should probably start dating or getting married too, he angrily replied, are you ready for a serious relationship? It sounded like I was a teenager and not old enough to do that. I replied that I was ready. If anything, I'm 25 years old and he's 26. We sat and talked and he left. When he left, he turned around at the door, just like in the movies, looked at me for a long, long time and very slowly closed the door. That look will probably stay in front of me for the rest of my life. So now I'm sitting in tears and I can't understand why he came at all. If he knew that he was getting married. And then I wrote him that I miss him and call him to visit at work. In fact, give away my interest in him. Then why come at all? After all, it's obvious that nothing good will come of such a conversation. I'm not happy about it since I have an interest in him. You could have just said over the phone that he was getting married soon. It is clear that after such a message, I would not have insisted that he come. Well, or you could have excused your business and not come at all. What's the point if you're already married to someone else? Yes, and in relation to the bride-to-be somehow interesting turns out, goes to talk to another girl who is already directly to him that he misses. The feeling that he came to say goodbye for the last time, judging by the long look from the door, but then why get married 
if I am interesting enough to come and look at me one last time. The girl is new, not the one I went on vacation with, and not one of the ones I slept with. I understand that the first reaction to say, womanizer, and there is nothing to understand. But I love him and will now very hard and long to forget. I want to understand why he came and drilled a glance at me goodbye. What was it? I am writing my confession to speak out. You can't tell your friends that, and I know I have to break up with it myself. But how? He pursues me and winds up the record that I am super mega jealous. He is faithful, and he does not need anyone, and no one will ever give me away. And he's not going anywhere. In the police, love is not a crime. They won't do anything to him. The devil made me meet him at work a year ago. He was a client of the office. He texted me back. I wrote him back. He asked me out. I went out with him. And it spun. For two weeks, I thought I was the happiest woman in the world. And he was a romantic, simple, quiet man. I thought I had met my soulmate. Then I began to notice that he was constantly writing in social networks, saying that he had a lot of friends. He was very sociable. He liked to go with them to the nature to hike, to rafting, for mushrooms, just to relax. Nothing like that. But he kept getting calls from various unsigned numbers. And he reset, saying collectors, although he had paid off his loans long ago. Once we were sitting at the dacha drinking wine in the evening, and all of a sudden an elderly woman came in and he didn't close the door. The music was on loudly and I couldn't hear their conversation. She left, he said she was just a family friend and brought jars for pickles. She really brought them. Then he had some rolled cucumbers and apple compote. He said he could do it all himself and rolled it. Brought me lunch at work. He said he cooked mackerel on the fire himself. Then for some reason, he brought me a speaker with music about love, a flash drive, and a stack of photos of himself. The flash drive had a picture of the old lady who came in with the cans, and a video of him and his family on holiday. Yeah, and his folks said she was a family friend. I was high on falling in love, but one day I suddenly thought, can a fairy tale be true? We had only been seeing each other for two weeks then, and not every day. And one night I had a sleepover at his place. I couldn't help it and looked through all of his social networking messages on his laptop. I was very curious about his friends as he hadn't introduced me to them yet. I didn't know much about him. I also wanted to know his interests, what to talk to him about, what topics to joke about. Yes, I read everything, but there was not a single correspondence with the male sex. All the correspondence was with women of a sexual nature. And not just one, three, about 50. Every day he wrote. At first he started by just sending postcards, then songs and gifts. Then happy holidays, wishing all the best. Then he was interested in things. Well then called him on a date. And everyone agreed according to his already practiced script. My shock had no bounds. I read and even forgot that he was asleep next to me and could at any moment notice my reading. I don't know how much time passed, maybe two hours. I called a cab in the middle of the night. I gathered my things. He woke up. I told him that the neighbors called me and said that the pipe had burst in my apartment. We must urgently turn off the water. And I left. As I was reading the correspondence, I took a picture of a few poignant scenes of his correspondence and sent it to him so that he would understand that I was not coming anymore. He started writing, calling, coming over, begging me not to leave him. This was all before he met me. He loves me and he doesn't need anyone else. I sent his correspondence that they were all these two weeks while we were together if anything to which he said they were just meaningless correspondence. I asked how come, what about what you were discussing, how great sex was the day before yesterday? Let's do it again. What is that? He replied that it was just a joke. He was joking with her. 
And that's it, they have jokes like that. And he had already blocked and deleted everyone. Offered to come and see. My shock went away, I thought out, because all that time apart, I was missing him a lot and sobbing. And I decided to come back. And so it was repeated for a year. The correspondence didn't end. New women kept arriving, writing, calling. I left, he came back. Now I left again, and again he will come back. I moved into a new apartment, blocked him everywhere. But he still somehow always finds out where I am. I don't know how to get rid of him. Will he talk me into it again, or what? And again everything will be as it was, no change is expected. And I keep crying, and he keeps walking. By the way, that old lady is his female sponsor. I know you're gonna tell me to leave him. I've quit a thousand times. It's not working, and I can't live like this anymore. And we're not young, he's 50, I'm 43. He wants me to get married and have kids. God forbid. I pray to heaven to deliver me from this obsession, and all in vain. I briefly described everything that happened. If you describe everything he did, you will take a year and read.